So hello everyone, welcome back to another Shut Border video. If you think my throat is a little bit croaky, it is because I'm going down with a bit of man flu, but I will carry on to bring you this review comparison video of the Shark Sups touring boards. Now this video is gonna be really interesting because we're gonna be speaking about the range of touring boards, and but we're really gonna be driving into looking at the two different thicknesses, five and six inches. Gonna be speaking about the pros and cons to those thicknesses to help you understand really if you've already got a nice up what is the benefits to having a five and six inch thick board and obviously going to give you a really good idea about which touring board out of this range that you should be looking at so first off a bit of information about sharks up now sharks up have been in the industry for quite a number of years they're based in china but in 2020, they had a big turnaround with the look of their boards, the sort of message behind their boards, the environmental credibilities of the company. Everything changed dramatically in 2020. This year's range of boards is the same graphics as those years. They have subtly tweaked and increased the range of the boards, making a better range to suit better paddling weights. And most of the tweaks have been around the thicknesses of the boards, but we'll speak about that in a minute. A quick look at the touring range from Sharks Up this year. It consists of four boards. You can get 11.8 by 30 by 5 inches thick. That's 260 litres in volume, and that weighs 10.16 kilograms when we weighed it. That retails at $741, 669 euros or 579 pounds. The newest board that a lot of you are talking about this year is going to be the 12 6 by 30 and that's 5 inches thick, 280 litres. We weighed that 11.16 kilograms and that retails at $774, 699 euros or 599 pounds. Up from there, they do a 12 6 by 36 inch thick board. That's 350 leases in volume. The retail price on that is $774, 699 euros or 599 pounds. And lastly, the biggest board they make is a 12 6 by 32 inches wide, six inches thick. 374 litres, you can see how much more volume it has there. When we weighed that, it weighed 12.44 kilos. The retail price, $874, 789 euros or 599 pounds. So that's the range of boards. You will see the outline shapes and the look of the boards is very similar throughout the range. Looking at the outline shape, you've got a nicely pulled in nose. You've got a fair amount of width pulling back towards almost towards the tail and a little bit of a pulled in tail there. That offers you a good amount of stability throughout most of the board. Still having a nicely pulled in nose with a small amount of rocker at the nose allows you to punch through and over chop even in open water paddling. And at the tail of the board being pulled in a little bit, it does make the board a little bit faster to paddle than having a big wide square tail. They're finished off with bungees at the front and at the back of the boards. You've got towing eyes under the nose of the boards. All of the boards are finished off with the same fin setup, which is Shark Sup's own click-in fin system. And the other great thing about that fin box is it's really easy to fold up because it can fold halfway through that fin box. So it makes it very easy to pack your board down and get it in a bag, which is definitely the biggest problem with having the more traditional US box fin boxes. They do not fold up and go in the bag nice and small. Throughout the whole of the Sharks Up range, you'll notice there's quite a distinctive look to the boards, very different to anything else on the market. Notice the markings on the boards themselves all in orange. They are all distinctive markings and they're all markings of sharks. Every single type of board has its own marking of a shark. So for instance, these boards are actually modeled off of a whale shark. And the whale shark is one of the biggest ocean pelagic cruising sharks, travels all around the world, hence why the touring board looks like a whale shark to emphasize, to get out there and explore. And I think that's really neat to see. And I was highlighted that when I first watched Harry's blog, when he went looking for egg cases with the Shark Trust and Sharks Up, they said about that there. And that's when I first became aware of the different graphics that they have on their boards. Talking about the Shark Trust, which you might've seen on Harry's blog, as I just said, Sharks Up are working really closely with the Shark Trust to really educate and inspire people to learn more about sharks, which 
me personally, I'm really passionate about the sea. I'm very passionate. Watermen, fishermen, spear fishermen. Yes, I take from the sea, but I do give back to the sea as much as I can. And definitely working with the Shark Trust, making people aware of sharks, just doing as much conservation as we can to our oceans really is an amazing thing. So I really can't say enough I really like the way sharks up, so working with the Shark Trust, and I look to see that grow into the future. And definitely, if you want to find out more about sharks, please get on the Shark Trust website. They've got massive knowledge, and it really is great to inspire you all, and especially the younger generation. Definitely a really good move, and I think it's great for our oceans and environment. Now let's move on to the package that comes with all these boards and then we'll speak a bit more about what they're like on the water and of course the five and six inch thick differences. First off looking at the bag, I think the coolest looking bag with its grey, orange zips, Sharks Up logos on it, the shoulder, the padding around the back area, the shoulder padding, nice and big, easy to get the boards in and the bag actually has got wheels as well. In the bag, obviously you've got your pump and you've got your paddle, all fits in the bag nice and easy. The pump itself is actually, you might recognize it, it's actually a Bravo Super Pump, so it's one of the best pumps on the market. Easily gets the air in the boards. It's a two-way pump, so you can put, switch the nozzle over at the back when the pumping gets hard, and that makes the pumping a little bit easier. The leash it comes with is a nice, good quality coiled leash, so it's great for staying on top of the board, keeping out of the water, doesn't catch on seaweed or twigs. Obviously, we really recommend using a leash 90% of the time, unless maybe you're in faster or tidal moving waters. Therefore, you might want to look at adding a quick release leash to that. But for most conditions, that leash is perfect. Looking at the paddle that comes with standard with the package, it is a carbon shaft nylon blade paddle. Now that is better than average paddle. An average paddle, I would say, is an aluminium three-piece paddle. The problem with aluminium paddles is they flex and they bend, and sometimes they don't even go back straight again. They actually stay bent especially after maybe six months of use. A carbon shafted nylon blade, it's gonna give you much more performance in the shaft, it's gonna be stiffer, it's gonna be more reactive, it's gonna be lighter, so it's gonna be easier paddle, but you've still got a nylon blade, so it's very easy hard wearing. If your kids are gonna ram it up the beach into the rocks, you've not got a problem with that. The blade shape is not the most refined. It definitely, if you're gonna be paddling longer distances, maybe more than two kilometers in a session, you could look at upgrading your paddle. I know a lot of shops have got upgraded paddles. Maybe you could, they could put in as part of a package as well. But definitely it's a paddle that is fine to get you on the water for general paddling. I really like the way it all fits together. It's very secure. Definitely more secure at the top here than lots of other paddles on the market. It hasn't got a sort of groove that some paddles have when the top shaft goes in to the midsection. But the lock does come in nice and tight and it doesn't twist. So it's adequate, definitely as I said at the price point, it's a pretty nice paddle. Definitely worth another note about the fin shape and the type of fin it is. So this is, we actually did a little mini review on this a couple of years ago when Sharks Up first brought this fin box out. It's quite a neat little fin box that clicks in and then you slide the fin back towards the back of the box and it stays fixed in. So you don't need to use a screwdriver, you don't need to screw any bolts up. We've been using these for a while. We haven't lost any of these fins. I imagine if you probably wiggled it hard enough and managed to hit it against the rock sideways at a certain angle with a certain wind direction, possibly you could lose a fin, but we haven't heard or seen any of these fins come out. They're very nice and easy to get in. Take a little bit of a wiggle, but you can pop them out nice and easy. The fin shape itself, you see it's quite wide at the top here. That offers a bit more stability. Yes, you will actually get stability with a fin. Most people might not be aware of that, but as you rock from side to side on your board, a wider base fin is gonna give you a bit more stability. And also, having more area at the back here actually helps you go in a straighter line, which is probably what most of you want when you go paddleboarding. But the good thing about that fin box as well is you can put a normal US box fin in it as well. So if you're wanting to get an even bigger fin or more swept back fin, you can put a standard US box fin in there as well. Now we're gonna start talking about these boards on the water, but before we do that, I'm gonna cover a few other things that definitely need to be highlighted with these Sharks Up boards. For a start, the deck pad. Now the deck pad is a very simple gray deck pad. It's got sort of its embossed shark logo 
on the deck pad, but you'll notice it's just one color. So basically compared to other boards in the market, it does look a little bit boring. But if you think about that from the environmental side, just using one color of EVA in the deck pad and not having it really cutting out with loads of diamond grips so you're losing EVA, does mean there's a lot less material wasted. Now, personally, I think that's a really good thing. If they can put the same deck pad on every board, they can use more of the deck pads. And if they can reduce the amount of cuts and angles, on the deck pads and the colors in the deck pads you're going to find there's going to be less wastage in the on the factory floor now i know if some of you say oh but you can recycle that eva that's on the floor but yes it's a process that has to go to which costs money energy time and it's all impacting what's happening in the world at the moment so this deck pad is a simple maybe a little bit boring but actually it is doing something good for the environment as well as you go to get these boards on the water, you're obviously going to have to carry them down to the water. Now, this is the first time I'm going to bring in the five and six inch thick comparison thing. It is a lot easier to carry a five inch thick board down to the water's edge for a number of reasons. Obviously, the board is lighter. It has physically less material in it. But the big thing really is to do with how it sits off of your arm. You can easily see in this video shot. I've got a five and six inch thick board under my arm. The five inch thick board is much slimmer. It's much closer to me and my arm is not sticking out so far. It's much more comfortable to carry longer distances. If you're a smaller person, sub, definitely sub 65 kilos, even 70 kilos, my weight 75 kilos, it is a lot easier to carry a, carry a thinner base board than a six inch thick board. So that's the first thing. The next thing we're gonna talk about is stiffness of the boards. And before I talk about that, I'm gonna quickly go over the construction of these boards because there is a lot of pressure you can get in these boards they are really standing up to a lot of pressure which shows the construction process is pretty good fusion technology like a lot of brands to be honest are using at the moment that's where you reduce and you take out the glue and you heat up a lot of the materials to bond them together with heat instead of glue two layers of pvc on the top two layers on the bottom two layers on the rails but you have got an extra layer on the top and the bottom where they put like a thin rail band over. So you've got three layers on the rails technically. The way that's made, it does mean you can get a lot of pressure in the board. These have a maximum pressure of up to 25 PSI, but they have a recommended pressure of 15 PSI, like many boards do. So it shows, like I've said in other videos, if a brand's willing to put their stamp on it saying, yep, yeah, you can pump it up to 25 PSI, shows they've made the board well and they're happy with the construction of the board and it's gonna take that pressure. So that moves us nicely straight on to the deflection test. Now, our deflection test is something we do with every single ice up that we test or review. We put on a gap of 1.5 meters apart and we put a weight of 75 kilograms in the center of the board and then we measure how much the board bends or deflects. Now, this is where a five inch and a six inch thick board will differ. This is where you'll find the bigger differences. You'll always find a six inch thick board will be stiffer at the same PSI. Just imagine if you went to a 10, 12 inch thick board, it would be even thicker again, but obviously it would be impossible to paddle because you'd be miles off of the water. So there's always a compromise between being the right thickness to the right stiffness. So with these boards, we put the five inch thick boards in our deflection test and the six inch thick boards in our deflection test. We pump them both up to 15 PSI and took the measurements and then we pumped them both up to 20 psi and then took the measurements let's start off by looking at the five inch thick board which is not going to be the stiffest board we know the six inch thick board is going to be stiffer at 15 psi that dropped 16 millimeters which is a pretty pretty good drop that stands up with some of the top boards in the market and at 20 psi it dropped 14 millimeters so that just goes to show the more pressure you get in the board the stiffer the board will be. So if you're a heavier rider already, you can see that you're gonna be wanting to put more pressure in your board than if you're a lighter paddler. Now, if we look at the six inch thick board of the same size, at 15 PSI that dropped 12 millimeters. So that's already stiffer than the five inch, even at the 20 PSI. And at 20 PSI, it dropped 10 millimeters. So you can see there by our deflection test, the stiffest boards generally on the market are always six inch thick, but that doesn't always make them the nicest to paddle, especially if you're a lighter paddler. So let's talk about that now. Let's talk about why Sharks Up are making five and six inch thick boards on the market and really what boards will be suited for what types of people. 
So on the water, five and six inch thick boards do feel very different. You might have heard me say it in lots of other videos before, there is pros and cons to having different thicknesses of boards. And you might be well aware that if you are a heavier base rider, you're gonna find a six inch thick board way easier to paddle because it's gonna give you more stiffness. You're gonna find more physical volume in the board. So the board is gonna be floating at the right level for you. But at the same time, if you're 75 kilos and under, you standing on a six inch thick board is not really gonna be any benefit. It's not gonna give you any more of a benefit. In fact, it's gonna be more of a negative impact to your paddling experience. You might have heard me say the words, feel detached from your paddling experience. You're sort of very elevated and very high. The higher you are out of the water, the more unstable you're gonna be. In an ideal world on a paddleboard, you'd be standing near at on the water level, or maybe even just a little bit below, because it's lowering your center of gravity, making you as stable as possible. For me, I'm a really interesting example. I'm 75 kilograms, so I sit right on what I would say the dividing line between a going on a six inch thick board or going on a five inch thick board. Now, when I've been paddling these boards over the last couple of weeks, it's been really interesting to see the differences and feel the differences between these boards. The five inch thick boards for me feel lighter, more responsive, which they are lighter, there's less material in them. They feel like they're more stable, and that's an interesting fact why that is. And if we look at it in a very simple term, you can see it. If you look at the rail of a paddleboard and you look at a six inch thick and a five inch thick rail, obviously the six inch thick rail is thicker, sticking out of the water more. As you're rocking from side to side or paddling it in general, waves will approach the sides of the rails and they will wrap up on the rail. You'll see that the water can wrap up further on a five inch thick rail than it can a six inch thick rail. And in some cases, it can start to come over the curve top section of the rail. And that actually gives you a lot of stability. The water in effect will hold you down a little bit more and give you that more stable feel. A big wall or a slab sided wall like a six inch thick board when I'm riding it, the water rides up and doesn't grab over the rail so much. And therefore that is the corkier feel. It feels a little bit corkier. feels like it wants to bounce around a little bit. And the five inch thick board doesn't for me. It feels a little bit more planted like the water. It's almost giving me a little helping hand and grabbing me a little bit, which is actually adding a lot of stability. Another thing that you might not have thought about is Windage, you do get a lot of windage, even if there's no wind, if you're paddling forward or if it is windy and you're drifting along, the higher you are out in the water, the more board rail you have, it's gonna get affected by the wind. A five inch thick board has less rail side overall, so it's gonna have less windage. A six inch thick board sits higher out of the water, so the wind is gonna affect it more. Therefore, it is actually gonna be slower to punch into wind. If you're paddling downwind, obviously the extra windage is an advantage and it's gonna push you along a little bit faster. But the biggest thing you'll notice is when you're paddling across wind, you'll be able to paddle a five inch thick board in a straighter line because the wind won't be hitting it and affecting the side of the board so much. Another thing, if you're getting into a bit more technical maneuvers, maybe you're doing some step back turns, a lot of you should be doing this sort of stuff. It's great for improving your paddleboard skill and confidence. Getting back on the board on a five inch thick board is gonna sink a little bit easier, a little bit earlier, so you're not gonna have to go so far back on the board to pivot on the tail. A six inch thick board, especially for me at 75 kilos, I have to stand further back, which means I have to do more walking steps to get to the back of the board to turn and pivot the board around. So that's a lot of information for me on the five inch versus six inch thick board. If I give you some more information about the six inch thick boards in general, obviously it's gonna be stiffer. So if I'm gonna want a stiffer board with more performance, maybe if you're looking at racing or getting top speeds, a board that's flexing in the water isn't gonna be so fast to paddle. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure your board is pumped up to the highest pressure and you're probably gonna to wanna to have a six inch thick board as well, giving you a good, stable, stiff platform. Remember, if you're on a six inch thick board, it's a lot harder to climb back onto because it's higher out of the water, especially if you're wearing a buoyancy aid, a five inch thick board is much easier to climb back on. Not many people think about that when they get into paddleboarding for the first time. There are definitely some advantages to six inch thick boards. One of the biggest one is you don't need to put so much air in it to get the same amount of stiffness. And speaking about that, that's why a lot of brands five years ago were just making six inch thick boards because a number of reasons really the manufacturing process didn't have to be so good you didn't have to have such a good 
concentration on good materials like the sharks up have done here and you didn't have to have so much pressure in the board the board didn't have to take 20 psi of pressure you could pump the board up to 10 12 psi and it would still give you a stable board so a lot of cheaper base brands were actually pushing more towards the six inch thick boards than putting a lot of time and energy and construction processes into making a better five inch thick board so any brand that's got a five inch thick board and a six inch thick board in their range like sharks i've have here shows that they really thought and put the right manufacturing processes and materials into their boards to get the most out of them so when it comes to understanding if you are a five or six inch thick board paddler a quick summary and it's a very simple way to look at it and i'll throw in a slightly more confusing way in a minute the simple way is if you're 75 kilograms and down look at a five inch thick board if you're 75 kilograms and up look at a six inch bit thick board if you're in the middle dividing line like me, 75 kilos, if I was gonna take a lot of weight on my board, possibly I would go towards a six inch, um, but most of the time I'd be riding a five inch. The only slight thing where you could flip it and it gets a little bit confusing, especially you can do it with the shark set boards because they take a large amount of pressure. If you were 80 kilograms, maybe even 85 kilograms, you didn't wanna to take too much weight on your board, physical dry bags and stuff, you could probably go for a five inch thick board and pump it up to 20 PSI and it would still be really good performing for you. But as I said, if you were gonna put in more weight on the board, then you're definitely better off moving towards a six inch thick board. That's a slightly more confusing way when you throw in PSI pressures because Sharks Up allow you to put a lot of pressure on your board. You can maybe even go up to 22 PSI. You're gonna make that board stiffer and definitely it's still gonna feel nicer to paddle at 80 kilograms really than a six inch thick board. So that's the thicknesses covered. What about the shapes and widths of these boards? You've probably heard me say it in other videos, the longer you go, the more glide you have, the wider you go, the more stability you have, but the less glide you will have. So if you're wanting a super stable board, but still has a lot amount of glide, you're gonna be looking towards 12.6 by 32, nice and stable. If you're gonna be wanting that extra stability, you're probably a little bit heavier, which is why they only do it in a six inch thick size. If you are wanting a pretty comfortable board to paddle in large range of conditions and it's not so super stable or you're a lighter paddler they do make the 12 6 by 30 in a five inch thick that's going to be a really nice board they also make that board in a six inch thick as well so if you're a little bit heavier but you still want to paddle a little bit faster the 12 6 by 30 in a six inch and definitely if you're a lighter paddler really i would definitely say 65 kilos and down really urge you to go towards the 11.8. Being a little bit shorter, it's still gonna have that glide because you're lighter. 30 wide, five inches thick, it's gonna be nice and easy to carry, it's light. That's gonna be a really great board for the lighter paddlers. Yeah, you could go up to 75 kilos and paddle that nice and easy, but real sweet spot, 65 kilos, you really get on well with that lighter, smaller, shorter board. Because the Sharks Up Touring Range is a range of boards that's going to get you paddling places. You are going to be able to cover some miles. You are going to be doing some overnighters with these boards if you want to. Or you can definitely aspire to doing those overnighters. You've got the bungees at the front and back. You've got a large amount of storage facilities. And obviously the board can carry a serious amount of weight. Definitely looking at the two different thicknesses. So now moving on to the packaging, remember we speak about this on a lot of the brands, a lot of the brands get wrapped, the boards wrapped in plastic, um, pretty horrible to see considering you're paddling a plastic board anyway. Sharks Up have really changed up, up the game with all this. Boards all come rolled in paper, even all of the repair kits, the pump, the paddle, it's in a sort of recyclable non-woven bag that, that's great for the environment, so they've scrapped all the plastic in that. The repair kit is in that little non-woven stuff as recyclable stuff as well really nice cardboard ah it's great that is definitely i would say one of the industry leading packagings that that comes in the boards lots of the brands need to wake up and look at that definitely a really really big pro to a pro for us carry on with that shark up fantastic in the future i'd like sharp to ideally push a bit more into the materials in the boards themselves trying to get some recyclable based materials in here but i understand that's a hard job most important thing is they're long lasting sharks up give you a three-year warranty a standard with all their boards so it proves that they're really happy with the, um, the construction and the process that they put into these boards and again remember 25 psi maximum pressure that's another thing that shows to me that they're really focusing on and they focused on making you a hard wearing board that can take a large amount of pressure. 
opposed to some brands which maybe reckon 15, 12 PSI. Well, that doesn't really say very much about if they're confident if their product is well made, does it? Looking at pros and cons and value for money, well pros, they've got some really great shapes, great thicknesses across the range of their touring boards. No matter what size of paddler you are, there is a board in there to get you touring, get you paddling further. That is great. I really like the markings of the sharks and the whale shark on the touring range. Really well thought out. I like the way that they're working with the Shark Trust. I like to see them build on that and more, maybe work with other brands just to keep that environmental message going like the website, they've got a lot of information there about sharks and about educating everybody about it. Again, I think that's just really fantastic stuff. The deck pad, I really like the deck pad, how it's simple and they're keeping out the colors in it, brings down the environmental impact on that. Board stiffnesses, they need to be spoken about. That is a pretty stiff board. Remember the stiffest boards we have ever tested have been seven millimeters. So this, and that was a six inch thick board like this one here. So this is only a few millimeters off the mark of being some of the stiffest boards the market. The weights of the boards aren't too bad, although we did find them different to the website specified weights when we weighed them. Cons or negatives, there isn't very many on this board. Uh, extra handle up at the front would be great. These are touring boards, so a lot of times you're going to be loading them up. Maybe the bungees need to be a slightly thicker, better quality if you're going to be putting big cargos on there. You could increase the eyelets to one more at the front there so you can get a bigger dry bag on the front. I like the way that the bungee eyelets are right out on the outside, on the back, not enough brands do that, so that's a really good thing. Tail kick pad, I will bring that up there because I do always bring up a slight little EVA raised pad would be nice if you're getting into step back turns because you could take your bungees off and try a bit of step back turns. I've heard it, you might have heard me say in other videos, it's great for improving your confidence on a pilot board. Um, and having a little bit of a raised EVA pad, even if it's strip to help you feel where your foot is, gives you a good reference point of where you are on your board. Value for money, I think they're pretty competitive. They're definitely better than some other more expensive boards on the market. The stuff that they're doing in their packages, the bags, definitely working with the Shark Trust, forcing out the environmental message, that is all a good thing and is our very competitive price point. So yeah, I think they're very competitive at that price. So there we go, hope you enjoyed that video. I hope my croaky voice didn't put you off too much. There was a load of information in there a lot about the five inch and six inch thick thickness thick, 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 I can't get it out now sick thicknesses of the boards sharks up touring range is a great range you could be looking at if you're wanting to get into paddling faster and further this year and definitely if you're like me and a lover of sharks and the environment they are a great brand to buy into definitely check out them at the local shop see if you can get a demo of them I understand right now in the current market obviously you might have to wait a little bit but every brand is in the same boat literally with that with stocks of paddle boards around the world if you've got any questions or comments as always please let us know if you've got any feedback on five and six inch six boards get them in the comments section below any negatives also let us know thank you very much and we'll see you on another subwater video real soon